What's up y'all, Candy Girl here with my two cents about dating and intimacy and you know, the initial phases of a relationship. This was actually a requested video by one of my biggest supporters, his name is Dirk. And um, he's been really giving me some great ideas about, about um, uh, video. So with that being said, thank you so very, very much. You know I love you and that you're a great supporter. For all of my first time viewers, you know, come and join the family. So subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff. Like my videos, because from what I heard, it helps it become more visible. And um, for all of the people who have been with me, I really appreciate y'all because I, I don't do these videos. I do it for fun, but I don't be doing it to get zero views. I know that. So I appreciate y'all. Now on to the video. And, and okay, let me say this one more thing. If you would like for me to give you my two cents on any given topic, don't be shy. Um, I have not yet rejected anybody's request for a certain type of video. So, you know, go ahead and leave your suggestions. I'd be happy to oblige. So let's get to the topic at hand. The question, and, and Dirk, if I, if I forget something, please don't uh, be shy. Go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll answer it there. But it's really all about the first stages of a relationship. And I can definitely identify with the level of uncertainty and, and nervousness and trying to figure out, am I doing this right? Am I jumping the gun? Am I not moving fast enough? You know, stuff like that. Because I'm actually in a relationship and we are still in that kind of honeymoon phase. That's my budo. So, um, the first question that, that Dirk asked was, when you first get the female's number, should you call her right away or should you wait a couple of days? Now, that's the classic wait around and act cool move that I don't be liking because everybody knows about that move. And to me, I just think that you're trying to put on a front when you ain't got a lot of kicking. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know you're cute. I know that you uh, probably got it going on based off our conversation that night that you got my number. You know what I'm saying? And if you really are truly interested in me, I am the person who would believe you would not be trying to front. You would make sure that you get in as soon as possible because you know I'm a good catch that other men are probably trying to holler at me and you need to get in as soon as possible and make that move. So what does that mean? That means that I wouldn't say you gotta call her that night. I ain't saying that you gotta call her first thing in the morning when you wake up and you wake up at like seven o'clock in the morning. No, I ain't saying that. But what I'm saying is Go ahead and do your normal activities of daily living or whatever, whether that be to go to work, to go to class, to clean your home, to cook dinner. You might hang out with your friends that day or whatever. And then when you have a moment to yourself where you can just kind of sit and kick it, then go ahead and give a call, you know? But I would not say to wait a couple of days just so that you don't seem eager. Um, along that similar vein, if somebody takes you, no matter what the phase is in your relationship, I'm a strong believer of not just dropping everything unless that motherfucker is bleeding. And if you bleeding, why you got time to text me? You know what I'm saying? But unless it's something very urgent, like that person is lost, they're on their way to my house, they got lost, and I know they lost, or whatever, I am not going to be jumping to answer the phone if I am busy. You know, let's qualify it with that. So, if you're busy, if you're doing something, I don't give a fuck if you are painting your toenails. I don't care if you're watching my YouTube video. I don't care what it is. I don't care big, small, whatever. If you're doing something, go ahead and finish that out. And then pick up the phone and call that person back or text them back. Now, as far as making plans with someone, I think that it's very important for the man to demonstrate that he is interested in the young lady more than just a hookup or more than just a booty call. So that means that you're going to have to initiate a couple of dates to demonstrate to her that, hey, I'm actually like trying to get to know you as a person. I'm not just trying to 
fill up my time because I'm bored and I need somebody to kind of entertain me and then be on the phone and text. I'm a person, I'm personally one of those people that I get very frustrated when you all you want to do is text. Um, I like to talk on the phone. I think that's a little bit more, um, you know, reflective of the connection or the chemistry that we could have as a couple. But by no means should you hold off or even hesitate in trying to plan a date with somebody that you like because again there could be other men who are courting her and she might not be sure about what your intentions are so you making your intentions very plain that you're trying to get to know her will actually help you in the long run but with that being said, after about the first three dates that you plan, and I would guess like try to make it like once a week um, at the beginning, but once, you know, the first three, maybe four dates, after that, she should be trying to reciprocate. She should be trying to make plans with you because at that point, she should have grown a little bit of feelings for you and she wants to see you soon too. You know, with my man, I was like, shit, after our first date, I think I was like, I really enjoyed myself. I want to see you again. I just want to let you know that. That don't mean that I was like, oh, I want to go to the movies with you or whatever, but that did mean that I was making it clear I want to see you again. Whenever that is, don't be shy. If you if you want to plan something with me, I want you to know I want to see you and I am very much interested in you. So don't hesitate. You know what I'm saying? So then after a while, I'd be like, hey, you know, you want to go to Shelby Farms, which is like a little park. Um, you know, you just want to sit and watch the sunset or whatever. Um, it's good to see what types of dates she suggests because you want to damn what's going on in the um, gas station y'all act like we ran out of gas or something they gas is expensive anyway so what i'm saying is sometimes you do want to see what she has in mind so go ahead after the third date or so you know, sit back, let her kind of initiate the date. Now, if she want to go to Ruth Chris and Jay Alexander's every fucking time, and you over here, a teacher or a janitor or something, you know, she's got some unrealistic expectations of the relationship and what, you know, kind of activities y'all going to be doing together on a normal basis. Um, she also, I wouldn't say she a gold digger, but she is a person who is kind of looking for a free meal. Every single time she want to plan something with you, it's over a meal. And it's like, you know, I'm a, I'm an eater. Um, but I'm certainly not going to always suggest going to dinner because I know that even though maybe our meals together are only amounting to 30, 40, maybe $50 at the max. But if you do that enough times, that man's gonna be broke, okay? I can't afford to do it. Why would I expect you to do it? You know what I'm saying? So you kind of will be able to gauge where her mind is at, how considerate she is of your budget, and really like what she wants out of the relationship. If she suggests that you go to the park, or maybe you go and do something, but it doesn't cost a lot of money, then more than likely she is not here just to use you. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> another thing that I would suggest is to... Um, keep the intimacy to a minimum at the beginning. And I would say maybe the first three dates. Um, something that my boyfriend did that I was just like, you gonna have to um, not do this for very long. But I actually really grew a respect for him and I my feelings grew for him even more because of this. This man did not kiss me for at least the first month. And y'all know, after so many dates, it's just like, are you going to kiss me? Is this going to be something that we're like 
intimate with one another or are you just kind of like scared I don't know but then I thought about it and I was just like damn you know he must really respect me as a person because he doesn't want me to think that he's just here for sex so he is simply going at my pace and making sure that I feel comfortable with the situation before he makes any moves. And I think that's really important, especially with, you know, rape and stuff like that, where women are just crying out rape. And, um, and I'm not saying that people lie, but what I'm saying, or that all women are lying, but some of them do. And men don't want to get caught up in that, you know? Um, with that being said, intimacy does not happen overnight, nor does it take two years. You know what I'm saying? So there comes a point where you guys know she's a good person. He's a good person. We both want the same thing, whether that's just a casual hookup with no strings attached or a long-term relationship, or you guys are both looking to be married within the next two or three years. So when you know that you want the same thing, it's safe to say you can become intimate with that person um, within reason and know that you're not jeopardizing anything. Um, but once you become intimate with someone and you have not articulated what your intentions are, the risk that you run with that is if you're just looking for a friend with benefits or, you know, whatever the case may be, and it's not what she wants, because a lot of women, when we have sex, we release oxytocin, which is a hormone that kind of creates a bond and more intimacy. And it makes us want to come closer to that person off of the simple fact that we are we have shared our bodies with that person so if you have not made it abundantly clear and she has not expressly understood that this is purely something for fun i don't know what i want from you yet or out of this relationship yet but i know you sexy as hell and i want to have sex well you know if, if she hasn't, if you haven't communicated that and she hasn't expressly understood that, you might end up getting somebody who's really, really needy because after you've had sex, she doesn't perceive you to be coming closer to her. And now all of a sudden her oxytocin is through the roof and now she wants to come closer to you, but you don't. So just be careful about, you know, the expectations here. Um... I think there was one more. Okay. And then, yes, inviting somebody to your home, that is a big no-no in my book, unless it's for something purely innocent, like she needs to use the restroom. Um, but if it's like the first three to five dates, I would say, well, I would say after the third date, maybe she knows you're not a rapist, so she can come over there and y'all watch a movie or whatever. But usually... When y'all Netflix and chill, it's kind of understood that there might be a little touchy-feely, grabby, you know, going on. So, you know, just make sure that you're ready for that and that she's ready for that. So anyways, um, I think that's about all the questions that you asked. I think the last piece of advice overall in the, in the early stages is you've got to do a little bit of push and pull, but it has to be healthy and it can't be manipulative. So what I mean by that is... You might plan one or two dates a week, but then give her time to kind of reflect on what you all are building with one another. Give her some time to think about you, to long for you, to desire you, to think about all the funny moments that you've had together, to think about all the nice things that you said to her Give her some time to kind of re to digest that and to interpret and 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 you know kind of gush over you a little bit and to miss you and all that good stuff. Give her time to develop feelings for you because if you're always in each other's face, yes, you're growing feelings for one another, but you're not necessarily growing any sort of tension, so to speak. Um, and that the person is just like, oh my God, I just have to see this person ASAP, you know, 
try to build that tension. So that's it for me, y'all. Y'all let me know if you got any other questions, if you have any difference of opinion, because of course, we're all different. So you're going to feel a certain type of way about somebody waiting a couple of days calling or being intimate with a person versus me. So y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Of course, as always, I love you all. Until next time, love and blessings.